Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, my name is Brad. This is my channel Animate Orange where I build a lot of 3D metal models and show you how I do it today on the table. And on the table for the next few episodes or videos, I have another gift box set from Outer Earth, the Freight Train gift box set. Now, normally I try to wait until I've started these videos before I peek inside. This one is a bit of an exception. I've already looked inside. This consists of the locomotive and four cars. So what I'm gonna do is for each vehicle, and you can see them a little bit better on the back, for each vehicle, starting with the locomotive, I'm gonna build them one at a time. Each vehicle, each car or locomotive is getting its own video. So today, we're gonna start, open this box, look at it real quick, and we're gonna start with the locomotive, put that together for the first video. The next video, will be the gondola which is behind it so on and so forth so let's get started look inside of this and start putting together the locomotive in this neat gift box set that i'm rather excited to get thank you to patreon subscribers for helping make this possible let's get started metal earth freight train including engine and four cars age 14 and up yeah i qualify what's inside Ooh, papers. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Fancy. That is a diesel locomotive and gondola car. Neat. Has an envelope here with what feels like metal sheets inside. And I'm turning this around so I can see it. Diesel locomotive EMD GP40 diesel locomotive is a four axle diesel electric road switcher locomotive built by General Motors Electric Motive Division between November 1965 and December 1971. The engine can generate up to 3,000 horsepower. Below that, we have the Gondola Car, Wisconsin Central. Gondola Freight Cars is a close relative to the flat car but has low ribbed sides that make it useful for many types of loads. It's often referred to as the do anything car. So I'm guessing there's metal sheets in here. So let's kind of keep this open. Let's take a quick peek at it. Ooh. Sheets. Looks like we have a half sheet. The half sheet. We have a protected piece of paper and two more sheets. And notice that they're unengraved sides facing each other. So, so what if they get scratched, right? The engraved sides are protected. But I'm going to put those back together and into the envelope to keep from making a big mess on my table until I have a better grasp of what I'm dealing with. So that's one envelope. Just set that off to the side. We have another envelope with the box car and hopper car. And we have one more envelope, this one considerably lighter, off center caboose with just one sheet. We're going to start with the diesel locomotive and the gondola car. So we'll stick this out of the way for now. So I've singled out the two pieces of paper for the instructions for the locomotive and gondola, but we're going to focus on the locomotive at this point to start to this build off. So let's open this up. And you've probably, most of you have probably already seen some of my videos, already built some of these models. So you know a lot of this. If not, I'm just going to kind of go over this real quickly. This is the instructions that come with it. The important parts You've got the 360 view here. You've got a QR code that you can scan with your phone or go to this web address to see a 360 view of the finished model, provided there is one up. We have the sample part here with a sort of demonstration or indication of the insertion tabs, insertion holes and fold lines. Tabs go in the holes. Fold lines are you know areas that are kind of pre-scored so you can more easily fold the flap or area or whatever. We have the legend E when you see that in the assembly flow chart. It's pointing at the engraved side of a part or engraved section. Not any endpoints in the non-engraved shiny side, or it may have engraving, but it's engraving to like fold lines kind of stuff. And then we have the intention point. When you see that, it's usually telling you to align something a certain way, but sometimes it can be some other 
point of attention that you need to make sure you're doing this the correct way. Occasionally there's wording to go along with it, usually not. Blue circle, you see that by connection point, it means to insert an insertion tab in an insertion hole and fold it over 90 degrees. Green triangle means to insert the tab in the hole and twist 90 degrees. Got an assembly tip here, so recommended tools here, and then down here at the bottom we have the sheets, the layout of the sheets with all the parts on it, and you can kind of see the drawing of them all. You've got the part numbers pointing at the parts, so you can more easily find them, and you'll notice some things are colored in. These things that are colored in the same color, they're the same parts, like all these little purple parts are all the same. One of them is labeled number two, the rest of them aren't labeled. That does two things. It makes it easy for you to find that part, because usually that part is also colored in the instructions, so you can real easily come over here and find it. And number two, instead of lab labeling all of these number two and crowding this area up, it just makes it simpler. So I appreciate and like that they do that color coding with similar parts. And up here we have a little half sheet, same thing, just a drawing, a layout, part numbers, some of them are colored in, again, blues and purples and greens. And then below that we start the assembly flow chart, and for the most part it's pretty simple. You start with part one, this kind of red indicates areas that fold, slide over here, we've got part two, you do this four times, it's like a sub-assembly, gives you these, which attach here. Follow the arrow. Fold those in, follow the arrow, add in part three, twice, there's two of them. You know, do the sub-assembly, fold them appropriately, and attach them, and you end up with that. And you basically have to do this entire series two times. And then you come down here, pick up with four and five, sub-assembly shows you how to fold that part. This is pointing to this part, and you just follow the directions, sub-assemblies, and put everything together. Of course, you get to the end of page two, we go to page three, pick up and continue on down the page, following the arrows, page four, get to the bottom. In this instance, we go to the second sheet of instructions. To finish, open this up to the inside, to page five. Actually, I already unfolded and folded that backwards. And follow the arrows and they sometimes kind of swirl around sometimes they don't and then over to page six and when you get to the bottom of page six you will be finished with this particular model you flip over this is the assembly flow chart for the gondola which we'll get to in another video so that's just a quick rundown of the instructions now let's look at some tools Let's take a moment to talk about the tools that I use. This is my standard set that I use in most every build. I have long needle nose pliers and flat nose pliers useful for a variety of different things. I have flush clippers that I use to cut the parts off the trees. It makes it quick and easy. And then I have some precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one that's had the pointed end ground down slightly, and one with a flat sort of curved end great for getting into curved areas. And then I have a standard set of tweezers with an angled tip. These come in one of the Iconics models and I love them and use them a lot. When it comes to shaping rounded parts, there are many options. I used dowel rods for a long time. I sharpened the ends of two of them with a pencil sharpener. These two are great for making cone shapes. Another option is a cheap drill bit set. The set has quite a few different sizes to choose from. Another option is a set of step mandrels. I have a sculpting set here that I occasionally use and they have all kinds of different shaped ends on them. Some flat, some angled, some spoon, there's a couple of hooks. They're useful for reaching in and bending and pushing and pulling tabs and shaping parts from the inside. So we've quickly peeked at the directions, talked about some tools, I've got some basics to get me started. We have our packet of metal sheets. Let's put this together.
So far, this build seems pretty straightforward. Be careful with part 3. The parts that bend over are long and thin. Bend carefully, a little at a time, working back and forth across the area. You want to avoid bending the rest of the part, and some spots are going to want to bend when they shouldn't. Don't forget to put the little curve in the folded over end pieces. Now repeat the last few steps to make another set of wheels. Before shaping the coupler, I thought it would be a good idea to put a little curve in the tiny little back portion of the flap before folding things all the way over, but in hindsight, it might have just been easier to just fold everything over and push that little flap in last. As for the front part of the flap, I carefully worked it over with the tip of the slightly ground down precision tweezers that I have.
Part 6 was interesting to shape. I started by curving the side pieces using a dowel rod. Then I carefully bent the edges inward following the shape of the sides. Then I bent the very edge up to match the shape of the side. There's actually two tabs getting in the way of each other, two twisted tabs on the inside getting in the way of the side panel sitting correctly and I had to kind of coax them over out of each other's way to allow things to sit properly. One of the tabs on part 12 and 13 were too close to the side to easily twist, so I bent them over. Perhaps I should have attached and secured the tabs before bending the end of part 11.
I suggest holding the inside of the part next to the bend with tweezers or pliers while you bend over the flaps with your finger. That area is so tiny and thin it will definitely bend incorrectly without support. The step mandrel was not quite the right size for this part, so I gave the drill bits a try. Much better. These tabs on part 22 are a little smaller than usual. I had a bit of a difficult time maneuvering them into their slots. Reminder tip, it's a good idea to bend tabs that are at odd angles so that they point towards the next connection and line up with their slots. I found it helpful to bend these side tabs straight out so they don't get jammed going into their slots.
One of the sides got pushed in a little too much. Good thing I have tools for that. Well, I've gotten off to a good start, I think. The locomotive is all finished and put together. And I'm rather impressed. A lot of detail. It's just something about putting these models together, even though maybe I've seen the real thing. Something about the small scale and, and putting it together yourself just adds another level of detail and reality to it. It's kind of difficult to explain. This build took about an hour and 45 minutes just for the locomotive alone now that's one of five parts to this gift box set I haven't started on the rest of them yet so we still kind of done a little bit of the gondola car I don't think it's gonna take as long but I'm thinking this is probably the most complicated or, or, or most detailed longest part of the entire gift box set but that yet remains to be seen I think possibly the second most complicated might be the caboose the off center caboose but we'll see this is what i've got for now i'm really impressed with how neat it looks and how how much detail and how well it comes together and it's not an overly complicated it's challenging but if you've been building these models and you have some experience with these little 3d metal models this is not going to be a big deal you've probably already got the patience you've got some experience it's really not that hard to do it just takes time I, I it's challenging enough to be fun but not pull your hair out i really enjoyed this build i look forward to putting the rest of them together i'll leave it at that because there's more to build as always if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them down below watch out because the rest of the videos are coming i'm not stopping 
if you enjoy these builds, if you like these videos, you want to help support and keep more interesting builds coming, keep the builds coming, make them more interesting. Thanks to Patreon support, I was able to get this box. So those of you out there who are supporting me through Patreon, thank you very much for your help. You've made this possible. And if you'd like to help make more interesting builds possible, definitely check out my Patreon page. Give a little, only as much as you want. You don't have to give anything at all. I do enjoy these builds, and I will keep making these videos as long as I can on my own. So they're not just going to go away, but I appreciate your support. Even watching this video, thank you for your support. And thank you for watching. Keep on keeping on.